it's summer and it's hot inside the car, like an oven. But that's why we have air conditioning. So, how does an air conditioning system actually work? As with air conditioning systems in vehicles with a combustion engine, those in electric cars have various components. The air conditioning compressor is at the heart of the system. It compresses the refrigerant and pumps it through the entire circuit. The condenser and fan are located at the front of the vehicle. The evaporator, expansion valve and interior blower are usually installed in the air tank. The refrigerant is fed through the filter dryer and back to the air conditioning compressor. In electric vehicles, an electrically driven air conditioning compressor is used because there is no belt to drive it. Because a piston compressor would be too noisy for an electric vehicle, a scroll compressor is used. The power electronics control the electric motor in a range from 600 to around 9,000 revolutions per minute. The vehicle's control unit determines the rotational speed based on the performance requirements, temperature and pressure sensors. The compressor itself consists of two interconnected volutes. One is fixed in place, while the other moves eccentrically and interlocks with the first. The e-compressor is driven by electricity from the high voltage battery. The gaseous cold refrigerant is sucked in by the scroll compressor at the compressor's low pressure connection, passing the electric motor, which is cooled in the process. The refrigerant is also compressed by the volute's eccentric movement towards the center. Compression, in turn, causes the refrigerant to heat up. The refrigerant then flows into the various chambers of the housing cover. Pressure equalization in these chambers turns pulsating compression into a steady flow of gas. The now compressed gaseous refrigerant is fed to the condenser at the front of the vehicle at a pressure of around 18 bar and a temperature of approximately 100 degrees Celsius. In the condenser, the airstream and the fan cool the refrigerant to such an extent that it condenses. Now liquid, it flows onto the expansion valve. This valve is the transition from the high pressure to the low pressure section of the air conditioning circuit. It contains an opening with a small variable cross section. The liquid refrigerant has to pass through this opening, which reduces the pressure. In the evaporator, the liquid eventually becomes gaseous again and cools down even further. The fresh air that the blower supplies to the cabin is thus cooled by means of evaporation cooling. The gas now has to pass through the filter dryer, which traps any moisture in foreign objects. Since the filter dryer has a limited capacity, it should be replaced every two to three years and every time the system is opened. The compressor oil also circulates through the system along with the refrigerant. This oil should not be electrically conductive, otherwise short circuits would occur in the electric motor. The temperature in the vehicle is now nice and pleasant, which means that you can be more alert and concentrate better on the road. Of course, the car can also get too cold. Since electric cars do not have any waste heat generated by a combustion engine, that could be used for heating. This task must also be performed by the air conditioning system. This is achieved by reversing the physical effect. Electromagnetic valves guide the refrigerant through the circuit using other routes. An additional condenser is also required in the cabin's air tank. Once again, the compressed gaseous refrigerant leaves the air conditioning compressor at a pressure of around 18 bar and a temperature of approximately 100 degrees Celsius. In the condenser, it becomes liquid, releasing heat into the environment. The blower then transports this warm air back into the cabin, resulting in a comfortable temperature. The refrigerant is now directed to the heat exchanger at the front. Before that, however, it must pass through another expansion valve. Here, too, 
The small, controllable opening causes a pressure drop. The condenser at the front of the vehicle now functions as an evaporator, meaning that it turns the refrigerant back into a gas that extracts thermal energy from the surroundings. The gas is now fed back to the compressor, again via the filter dryer. The state of charge of the traction battery decreases as you drive. The main power consumer is the drive. But the air conditioning compressor, high voltage heater and DC-DC converter also need energy from the high voltage battery. It should be charged at a fill level of around 10%. Due to the cell chemistry, it makes sense to fill a battery to around 80% of its capacity at the fast charging station. Charging results in a loss of around 10%. A large proportion of this loss is due to the heat generated in the battery. As soon as the charging process begins, heat is generated in the battery. Since the battery needs to be kept at an optimal temperature, it must be cooled down during the process. So, the air conditioning system also has to cool the battery. The heat in the individual cells should never exceed the permissible limit. This is where additional components, such as an extra heat exchanger, known as a chiller, come to the rescue. A high voltage heater and the coolant pump for the battery circuit, and ultimately the battery cells, also play an important role. The speed of the air conditioning compressor is increased to match the battery's cooling requirements. The aim is to keep the temperature in the modules and the battery cells within the optimal range. The compressor pumps the compressed refrigerant toward the condenser at the front, where the refrigerant becomes cold and condenses. Since there is no airstream during charging, only the fan provides this cooling. The refrigerant then reaches the chiller. This chiller consists of an expansion valve and a heat exchanger. Here too the valve is the transition from the high pressure to the low pressure section. It is controlled electromagnetically and has a small variable cross section to reduce the pressure of the refrigerant. In the heat exchanger, the refrigerant becomes gaseous and cools the coolant, which then circulates through the battery. Via the filter, the refrigerant returns from the chiller to the low pressure connection of the air conditioning compressor. Of course, the battery may also need to be heated instead of cooled. This is where the high voltage heater comes into play. The coolant pump keeps the battery cooling system going. This pump is also electrically driven, of course. From the pump, the coolant flows to the battery, which is positioned on a cooling plate. This plate consists of a profiled sheet and a flat sheet. Both sheets are firmly connected to each other. The embossed profile creates a kind of labyrinth through which the coolant flows. Due to the design and the selected cross sections, the cooling plate can dissipate a great deal of heat from the battery. The ingenious design ensures that all cells are covered evenly. Mahler drew inspiration from nature for this ingenious cooling plate profile. A coral served as the model. This bionic principle achieves 10% more cooling capacity and up to 20% less pressure loss. The current with which the battery can be charged depends, among other things, on the battery's state of charge. To charge the last 20% of the battery, you would have to spend the same amount of time at the fast charger. But no electric car driver does that, and your battery will thank you with a longer service life. When the battery is about 80% full, the battery management system has to reduce the charging power to such an extent that the charging process stops. The electric car is now ready to continue its journey. Thanks to the e-compressor, the temperature in the vehicle is always pleasant. 
The charging process takes very little time and optimal temperature control protects the battery from aging.